executive, or no, this is not the executive session. We're going to start. <laughs> this is the wrong paper. So real. Everybody, thing. please leave. Yes. <laughs> From such a premise. We're we're going to call the uh, Urban Renewal Commission to order. Um, I'll, maybe I'll go back to this screen. That would help me, wouldn't it? Yes. Okay. Kathy, uh, can we have a roll call? Just got it. Yes. Um, Commissioner Neely. Here. Commissioner Polly. Here. Commissioner Smith. Here. Commissioner Yates. Here. Commissioner Mum. Here. Commissioner Edgar. Here. And Chair Roth. Here. Okay. So now we will take any citizen comments. Do we have any citizen comments? Nobody lined up for that. Okay. Uh, for, uh, for an item's not on the agenda. Correct. <laughs> and um, adoption of the agenda. We don't need to. Vote on that, do we? Um, no. Okay. Okay. Presentations. We have uh, 4A is 1366 Clackamas Cove LLC pre pre uh, presentation. So, should we go with the staff report first? Yes. Or, okay. Yes, and it's very brief. So it's. Uh, I think you've heard of uh, Clackamas Cove LLC. Uh, we have been working with them for some time. We're, as we uh, make efforts to to reach an agreement uh, for the development, uh, I have offered them an opportunity to get to come before you to give a presentation on how the project is uh, to date and just to uh, kind of go over the scope as it is. Uh, so I've invited Ed Darrow and, and Randy Tyler to, to come and do that for us this evening. So uh, with that, I'll turn it over to, to Ed and Randy. Great. Thank you. Thanks for coming tonight, guys. Well, thank you for having us. Uh, I guess we'll welcome you to our semi-annual meeting of the Cove. Okay. <laughs> 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 Are we excited for Christmas? It's a reunion. <laughs> yeah, it's a reunion. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I think I think you faced maybe about four or five commissions over this trip. <laughs> <laughs> Without question. And and thank uh, you for your humor. <laughs> we we do have a mechanical breakdown. Uh, our presentation uh, isn't functional. Oh. Uh, but we'll uh, see what we can get uh, out of it anyway. Uh, we were going to show you probably uh, about 10 projects just to show you, to create a little bit of credibility that we, uh, this isn't our first rodeo, so to speak, in terms of doing projects. We've done over a billion dollars with projects. And probably out of that, eight or 10 of those are waterfront projects. So let me see if I can get part of this to show for you. Uh, let's see if that's going to work. This was showing that we were uh, had projects up in Seattle, uh, Portland, Lake Oswego. I don't know why we're not getting the whole frame, but it's not working. Um, and those projects, the Bellevue project, we did two projects right downtown. Uh, they were 168 and 200 units uh, going on down the line in Seattle, Bellevue, and then over to the right is Kirkland. That doesn't show on your screen. Uh, but we did another uh, waterfront uh, project there where we had full views. I want to just go through these pretty fast. Just uh, out in in uh, Tannisborn, uh, right off Cornell, we did about 300 units there. And this one, you can see it. I'll just skip that. This is showing the old Portland cement plant, which has a lot to do with uh, taking and reclaiming areas. In this case, <coughs> this project we built over 20 years ago, we tore down <coughs> the old Portland cement plant and reclaimed all of the concrete. We uh, crushed it and used it for road base. We were able to reclaim $500,000 worth of steel when we took it down. And then we set it aside and we used that to, to do all of the, the road base. So that was a, a recycling program 20 years ago. Uh, this is the same project. We were able to build a water sports center on this project, which isn't showing. Uh, the city currently uses that for three high schools for doing uh, sculling, uh, which is a, a very nice give back. We'd like to do the same thing on this project. Uh, this kind of shows you on the screen. This works here. Uh, that's where the water sports center is. This was 500 units here. And then the city actually called us and asked, asked us if we would build this project. Do you know how to do it? Thank you. It's, not, hit, it doesn't it's work. not working. Oh. <laughs> it, he, had, he had a Mac and oh, okay. it's a long story. Oh. <laughs> right, it's not the equipment. Okay. So is that a public dock on Las Point? 
Where yes, this, this is public and it's a water sports nice center. Try. Okay. There's a public dock right here and then there's one that's connected to the restaurant. Originally the city said, you know, we want you to clean that stuff up. And I said, oh my gosh, we'll never be able to get something like that built out in the water again. Can you point those two out again? Yeah, we this is the, the, red dot on our screen. That's the yeah. water sports yeah. center. Right. Yeah, that's and right here about. is oh. a public uh, viewing platform. And then the restaurant's right here. Mm -hmm. And okay. there's a public viewing platform there. Your, your platform floats? Uh, no, these are uh, called, um, what are they, gravity uh, dolphins. dolphins. They go all the way down to the bottom and they're filled with concrete and they're all steel around the outside. Built a long time ago for the, the uh, Portland cement plant mm -hmm. and the barges came up there to yeah, offload the uh, raw materials. This is uh, right next to that project, which, go back one, River Bend, the uh, city of Lake Oswego asked us if we would work with them and the owner to build that project. The primary reason was is that we had about 2,500 feet of waterfront uh, walkway that we'd put in here. They wanted to continue that walkway all the way down to George Rogers Park. Mm -hmm. So we uh, got a hold of the landowner, made a deal to buy the property. The city worked with us. These are uh, 65 feet high. Uh, there was a 50 foot limit but it doesn't show because the road up here is completely above these buildings. So these were very high-end condos that went from about 300000 up to $2.5 million. This just shows one of the interiors of the condos, uh, the staircase and what have you. Right next to that uh, project, the other one, the city called us again and asked us if we would pick this piece of property up and it was about a million five for the property. I went to the city council and said, we'll put up $75,000 if you'll put up the balance. We'll get it approved, we'll put in the path, and then we'll pay you back. So we worked that out with the city. So it was a nice uh, public-private uh, uh, program. Merrill Hurst, which is right on the outskirts uh, coming into uh, uh, Lake Oswego, uh, we took and did the Merrill Hurst project there that was 105 single family detached, uh, create a nice monument there, uh, went to the city and said, we'll, if you'll help us uh, eliminate some of our costs because we had extra dirt, we'll build this wall versus having a uh, slope. And we created the slope and then we actually put in brand new uh, street lights and we created the gateway into Lake Oswego. Let's see, and that's just uh, Merrill Hurst again. Tidewater Cove, uh, we've taken a busload of people on a trip over there, and Jerry Herman was uh, part of putting that together. This was a 84-acre site, combination of offices, uh, condominiums, <coughs> a rec center, a marina, uh, and an office. So this one's very close to what we're talking about here. Uh, that is a gorgeous project. If you have any time to go over and look at it, uh, it's, it, it came out very nice. One of the issues that we had there, this project, uh, if you can see that uh, body of water right there, those uh, new wetlands, we put those in. This project was, uh, they were trying to get it approved for over 10 years, the prior owners, and uh, we took it over and got it approved in 14 months by taking and moving the buildings back off the water so that they weren't blocking views of the people that were up behind. And we put these uh, brand new wetlands in so the people that were in these condos that lined this area still had a connectivity to the water, but they weren't imposing upon the visual corridor of all the people. And this is a little bit of a look at the buildings, which would be somewhat similar to what we're talking about for the waterfront units. Interiors were nicely done, combination of granite <coughs> and stainless steel, uh, very nicely appointed. This is one of the penthouse units. Uh, this unit in particular was four million dollars. <laughs> it was a, a unique uh, set of interiors. Unfortunately, you don't get to see them all, but it was beautifully done. We're not talking about that kind of price point here. This was uh, somebody that wanted to do something tricky and we actually just uh, took the design, worked with their designer and then built it out. Uh, on the coast, we bought 100 acres. You can see the, the uh, coastline there. This was a large project, uh, 65 waterfront condominiums, 100 cottages, and seven single family homes, and then a, a rec center with a tennis court. Uh, that uh, project uh, had the just gorgeous uh, setting. Uh, it's about a half a mile of waterfront. It was uh, opposed by several people. 
We worked with them very closely, and after about eight or nine months, we got them to buy into it. <coughs> and then we worked with them literally every week. I had them come out, and I told them what we were going to build the next week. And they actually wrote us a nice letter of recommendation when we finished the project. These are just some of the houses and the things that were built there. I appreciate you had a, a Condi um, bridge in the background there. Ours is older. <laughs> oh, yeah. The, uh, which one Newport. Is? Oh, yeah. Well, that, uh, <laughs> this one here is a project uh, in San Clemente, California, where we built condominiums in the water. And then the one to the left, uh, from my perspective here, is another condo project on the hill uh, with a water view. Uh, the slide down below shows uh, a waterfront project here in Portland. Uh, coming to the cove itself, uh, as you know, we have uh, worked on quite a few uh, modifications to this. It currently has uh, the office showing there. That's up to 58,000 square feet. And I might just jump over to the site plan itself. This is 58,000 square feet of office uh, mixed use that could have a restaurant on this end and on this end. We have 244 apartments here. Uh, and to meet the <coughs> objective of the vertical housing, uh, we took all of these units along here, and the bottom floor has a commercial live-work type program that qualifies for the vertical housing. Uh, coming over to this site, we have six buildings. Can I stop you just a second? Yes. Uh, live-work, I think, of uh, home-based businesses. Is that what you mean or not? It, it can be either. They're not really big, giant commercial spaces. Uh, they would be more of somebody living in the units that would go down there and have a, a space where they could actually work, set up their whole office outside of the house. So but that is guaranteed to be workspace down there? Yes. Okay. Yeah. A it's, person that bought it and has a unit that they live in could not make their business down below and turn it into a residential? No, no, they can't even buy that, that space. That's going to be a separate rental. Uh, they actually would be living in the apartments, or in this case in the condos, right. and that commercial has to stay. If it gets converted anyway, then you lose your, your tax abatement. So we will not be selling those. Those will be independent, but we'll stay with the project. Uh, these uh, six buildings here have a combination of 31 to 32 units per building. They have an elevator. They're four stories. Uh, they have parking out in front, and the frontage of these also has a live work space. And something that we've added since uh, we've had the last meeting, we have taken this the building right here in the middle, uh, which is a uh, potentially up to 80,000 square feet of office. The bottom floor of this side of that office space and this side, uh, we've converted the lower floor of those units, about 1,800 square feet, for small restaurant. So we'd have, be able to have a nice restaurant right on the, the frontage area. And it's unfortunate the architect did beautiful drawings that are in here. Uh, we might be able to see part of them. Let's see here. Well, I'm just going to have to let that go. Uh, the uh, intent is to build this as the first phase, uh, 244 units. The way that we are currently working with uh, Eric and uh, David on the DDA is that phase one uh, and phase two could start simultaneously, but phase one has to kick off first so that we've got that out of the ground, or not out of the ground, but uh, moving forward with construction. Then we can start this. Uh, it's our desire to take and clean the whole area up in total right away. Uh, originally, the DDA required that we build one project, and then when it was completely done, we would start another project if yes i'm a little confused because you're saying simultaneously but this one will start first yeah <laughs> i know well, it, it uh, <laughs> you have we have to prove that we have financing in place and that we're ready to break ground on both projects if we want to do it simultaneously if it's done in uh, a series we could start break ground on one and a month later start the next phase it's a requirement under the DDA that we show that we have the financing in place before we can start the first phase. And if we have the financing in place in the second phase, instead of waiting until it's completed, we could start it directly there too. Okay. So when you're, when you're talking about that second phase piece, you're talking about actually working on that area right next to the cove for, uh, 
for cut and fill activities and that kind of thing? Yes. Uh, okay. The current program has the uh, main street and the roundabout as phase one infrastructure. Phase two infrastructure, which is Agnes coming all the way down to here uh, and <clears throat> including all the utilities that go in there, street lights, street trees, that's phase two. Our preference would be to kick off phase one and then directly thereafter come in and do the whole uh, infrastructure. Uh, there's probably about a $300,000 cost savings uh, to us to do that because if you can have one contract to do both of them, the MOB and the DMO coming in with all the equipment and starting up will save us a lot of money. So that's one of our main reasons for wanting to do I'm, that. I'm going to ask a question. I know I talked about this years ago. Uh, when we put in that path there, it was supposed to be a $100,000 path. It doubled in cost because of material, uh, uh, benzene based material and so forth that was under the soil. Uh, you're going to probably run into that as well. Can you would we be able to take that fill off site and bring fill in, or how yeah, would that be? We have approach? three sources of fill. Uh, we have 70,000 square feet of uh, 7,000 cubic yards of dirt right here. Yeah. The Tri Cities is saying that they will work a deal with us. We have a export area here, which is the north part, because that's going to be sculpted out into a uh, amphitheater, mm -hmm. and we have the ability of getting about 78,000 cubic yards here. So we have basically three sources. These two were our initial sources. Uh, then cutting this back uh, to a three to one slope and taking that dirt and rolling it up underneath the condominiums, that gave us enough material. Okay. We've, uh, we did this, uh, we probably have over $700,000 spent on all the engineering to do that uh, analysis. So that's all defined. So phase two, just let me get this clear. Phase one is this over here with the 244 apartments. apartments. Phase two is just the infrastructure. It is not the structures. No, phase two would be the structures Structure. and okay. the infrastructure. Okay. Yeah. So that would be two different uh, product types. And uh, the, the one thing that's at issue, a lot of people would say, well, because we're going to be leasing these condos, these will be probably 200 to $225 a month more than the apartments. And every project that we've built on the water, we've been able to get a premium. So we've taken the structure of the rents, made them exactly what this whole market is in Oregon City and just across the river. It's about $1.15 a square foot. And we add 15 cents more for the waterfront units, so they come out to about $1.29. Uh, these are about $1.15. So it comes out to where it's about $200 more per month. And a lot of people would say, well, would you build 400 units like that at one time? We have done it several times. And a lot of times they've been the same price point, but you build them progressively. In this case, coming out of the ground, uh, hopefully simultaneously, the, the price point will not be cross-competitive and we'll be able to actually lease them both. And, uh, a question on interconnectivity with the Oregon City Shopping Center. Obviously, we'd love to see where uh, people could uh, walk back and forth and have a, a lot of interconnection there so we don't have to have driving. If they're living in the condos or apartments, uh, they can just go pop right, up, right in. We have two uh, uh, access points. This uh, esplanade comes across, connects here. <laughs> Was that part of the presentation? <laughs> <laughs> Sounded good. <laughs> one, of the sea, one of your seagulls, huh? <laughs> uh, so we've got an access point that comes through here, over to here, and we have an uh, easement to go across uh, the uh, Oregon City Shopping Center. That was mandated by the city uh, mm -hmm. when they came in and made changes to the Oregon City. The other access point is coming down this walkway, going up here, crossing the road. This is a sidewalk on this, the cove side, coming across. And with the new uh, uh, Firestone Alley being cleaned up, there's going to be a sidewalk on this side of the road going in. Mm -hmm. So we have two, two ways to get in. And that's a very important uh, thing for our, our people that are in the units. Uh, on Oswego Point, we had two access points, and we made them, and it's, it's phenomenally used. People would prefer not to get in the car. They can walk up there. It makes it nicer in a whole bunch of ways because there's a couple of coffee shops. There's things of that nature. Also, the area that's right next to Firestone Alley, that strip, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, this goes go. That's right Parallel on Main Street. This the yeah. strip that comes down, right here, right yeah. there. Yeah. Yes, that's Tract A. Tract A is about 
eight acres, I believe. It'll be a combination of a little water uh, feature and it'll be a, a, a entry monument sign, which will be done very nicely. It'll talk about the Cove apartments. It'll talk about the office buildings. <coughs> and as we progressively build out the apartments, the condos, the office, and this, when you come up there, the sign will just keep changing and we'll add each of those components. Okay, but it seems like that that could be a jobs area, you know, where actually I could uh, create some type of office or, or infrastructure there. It's, it's too small. I mean, it's a very narrow piece. Uh, we, uh, Doug requested that we make that a trailhead parking area. I think we have 29 spaces, uh, and it's a long, skinny piece. It'll be owned by the city. Uh, so these parking spaces that are right here, mm -hmm. You can come down here, walk down here, get onto the trail system. So that uh, took the place of what this old just dirt area was right here. Okay. So um, that's a question. I, I'd like you to take before I do it. Could you just uh, circle phase one, two, three, four, and five for us? Phase one. Yep. Phase two. Yes. Phase three. Yes. Or phase three, either one of these. And the reason for saying that these are alternates is that. They are sizable uh, office components. Mm -hmm. Right now, there's a 25 to 35 percent vacancy factor in that kind of product in suburban uh, offices. We can't build it, uh, but we will, in fact, take and spin this out. This will actually become, and I, the drawings here showed it as a very nice park interim uh, with a little bit of parking space for the two restaurants that are right there. And the nice thing about uh, the phase two infrastructure work is that it spins that out. Spinning it out means uh, it's all graded out and it's all ready to build in it. So that gives us the ability to actually bring people in and say, this is a spectacular uh, setting. Let's build a, an office building for you. So uh, if you just walk out there now and you say, well, where's this going to be? It will be a spectacular setting to use for marketing to sell that, uh, that uh, office space. And we'd like to, to move that forward. And phase five? That's phase uh, four or five, and it's really a function of our ability to bring that person to this building or that person to this building. I got confused. Three or four. Three or four. Or four. Three, Three or, four. or four. Phase five is the water sports center mm -hmm. and the marina. Now, those two can okay. go at any point in time. The last <coughs> one, phase five, which is the <coughs> marina or the water sports center. My question is going to be this. That parking area you're talking about below the Oregon uh, City Shopping Center. Um, when would that be built out as part of this? Phase one uh, infrastructure. It is a phase one infrastructure. Yes. Okay. Good. Yeah, that was kind of mandated because we took uh, it away. You took that way out. Yeah, yeah, that's what I wanted to, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Um, so I think what we've got in total is an opportunity to uh, start out with this one and immediately come in with this. So that combination is probably $80 million worth of product. Uh, with our, um, and there was a summary in, in this presentation that would talk about the things that would come back to the city. We will be able to recapture the $3 million that was already invested. Uh, we'll have an annual tax over and above the abatement that will come into the uh, community here to the URC. Do you have any estimate on that? Uh, I know exactly what it is. Uh, it's the total of the two is about nine million dollars uh, of taxes, and um, I had it on the presentation here. Um, I don't remember the exact number, but I can get it for you. Yeah. So uh, the. Uh, all of these items will pop up at the end, uh, the uh, water sports center and the marina. And that's going to be a function of, those aren't, uh, it's basically us giving a give back to the city, uh, the community, the water sports center in particular. And then the marinas, those aren't a profit center, but it would be a nice marketing tool to use uh, for the units that are there. Uh, we would restrict, this is not going to be a skiing area, there would be a restricted area in terms of speed. Uh, if in fact the swim group that wants to be there, we would have a restriction on certain days. Uh, we'd like to accommodate it as a public uh, space that can be really enjoyed by the whole community. So let me see if we can get to, to something here <laughs> that's presentable. Uh, 
It's funny, we've used all of these, the uh, Mac equipment uh, before here, but let's see. This is a leasing error. Originally, we had <coughs> a joint use of the leasing rec building here for both of these. <coughs> uh, we felt like that might be a conflict. Uh, we've done it in other projects where somebody else has owned one thing and we've owned another thing. It's not the, the best set of circumstances. So between building six over here and building five, we've taken the lower floor which you can see on the screen there, which is about uh, 1,800 square feet. And that will be a leasing office and a lounge office for the waterfront, excuse me, waterfront units. And then on the other side, on the other side of the building, uh, between these two areas, we'll have a swimming pool. It will be for the waterfront units. And then in this building on the end here, we'll actually have a exercise area. So it, both phases are kind of uh, independent. The, uh, I think one of the nice additions is this putting in these smaller restaurants right here. Uh, we have built up to 10,000 square foot uh, restaurants. They don't work. Uh, they end up you know, being a burden to not only the owners but the community. These smaller ones, we can have a, you know, a, a nice little Italian restaurant or a sandwich place or something like that which should be for the, uh, the community. So I think that's kind of uh, without being able to go through 64 slides, um, which we spent a lot of time on, is the basic summary. So if you have any questions, I can certainly answer any questions. Any questions? I have one. Um, of the properties that you showed in your introduction, how many of those are still owned by you or one of the affiliates? Uh, all of the projects that we have built, we ha we would keep them from three to five years. We've sold them all. How do you? Uh, I've I've always had some concern about the stagnant conditions of the water in the cove. And do you have any uh, ideas as to how to make it fresher? You know. Uh, Part of the DDA has a requirement that we hire a hydrologist, uh, and, uh, and it might be something that's beyond that in terms of the technical nature of it. But to look at uh, how uh, the uh, cove could be kept open, uh, and to what degree that would be open, it's a combination that the, that we would share the cost of that jointly. It would be for a 10-year period, so we'd analyze it uh, and make sure that it, that it does stay healthy. Uh, I had heard from Jerry Herman, who might want to comment on that, that uh, that water circulates every seven days. And this was probably <laughs> three years ago that he was talking about that, so uh, it might be a little different now. Uh, but the intent would be to keep it healthy uh, and usable. The people that are involved with the uh, use of it as a training area for a triathlon, mm -hmm. they apparently had the water tested and it came out just fine. Yeah. Well, that's what my understanding. They they thought it was good quality water. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Not that many areas around that they could use that one. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, we ended up. I t I talked to the, her. I forget her name at this point, but uh, she was uh, very excited about their use of it. Uh, said it was like one of the only areas in the whole Greater Portland area where you can actually go swim like that. That's that's pretty nice. I'd like to keep yes. that. Yes. I uh, like the one. Anyone else? Uh, I think it was a great presentation. I really like the public access piece and, you know, getting that in right away. So I think that's good. Make sure that that trail stays open. It gets used a lot and it's a connection between us and Gladstone and a safe way to get, you know, from one section to the other section. So. One of the uh, discussion points we had with staff was uh, while you're doing uh, that work along the cove there, pulling it back, you'd have a temporary trail that yes. would go through? Yeah, that was mandated right. uh, by our conversations. I don't think it's actually in the DDA, but that's the intent. We uh, right. we agreed to do that, yes. Right. I mean, I've it's actually been out more there. and more heavily used as time oh, goes it's, on. Oh, it's phenomenal. I mean, yeah. every time I go out there, there's people, uh, right. you know, there. So it's, you know, we've done uh, 
three projects with major uh, esplanades. The, the Tidewater Cove is 12 feet wide, and on a summer day, I mean, it's crowded. I mean, <laughs> people love it, and uh, a lot of builder developers try to uh, uh, keep that from the public and make it all private. We've never done that on any project. We've always made it public and try to bring people to it. Uh, it's it's nice for the people that live there. It's nice for the people that are just visiting. So it's uh, it's something that we've always done. Something we will continue to do on projects. Well, and I think it's important to you know to keep it open and accessible, and people can see what you're doing, and it can you know gain support for the project and excitement over what's coming in. They can see firsthand what's happening there. Well, and it's like I had mentioned on that uh, South Shore project, uh, which was a big project, uh, a lot more frontage than this. Uh, we held weekly meetings with the community, and they just came out. And I mean, my concern was that they would come out and see something, and then write me a letter two weeks later saying you did something wrong. I said, let's not do that. Let's just be proactive and work mm -hmm. on it every week. Come out, and if you have something, write it that week, and I'll fix it that week, or I'll tell you. And then I actually laid out a schedule for them, showing them what I'd be doing the next week. So it was uh, it was a real buy-in for the people who were against the project and. When we started this project, as a matter of fact, I, I called up the, the uh, lead opposition person and I said, would you write us a letter of recommendation to, uh, who was the city manager then, to Peterson, uh, Patterson. And they wrote, she said, you want me to, I'm the opposition, you want me to write you a letter? And I said, yes, I do. She said, well, I will. You know, so it was, uh, it was a good working relationship. So we were, uh, we were proud of the project. Uh, we don't do a lot of projects. I mean, the, the average project is about $100 million. Uh, you know, uh, and to do that, uh, it takes a lot of time and a lot of uh, concentration and a lot of work. Uh, I don't turn that stuff over to other people. I want to be involved on a daily basis. It's my life. It's what I've been. On. I've done it for 45 years. I love it. So uh, this project will be an exceptional project. Thank you. It looks good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, any other comments by staff? I just, I looked like Jerry Herman wanted to make a presentation. I don't know. They were under well, citizen we'll put comments. in our little thing so I can okay. be glad to make a little statement. <clears throat> so I'm, as you probably all know, I'm Brian Boyce and live here in the city. Um, I'll just catch up on a couple of the little details that came out. The, there's evidently, according to the people that actually swim out there, there's springs out there. You can tell because the water's colder, and evidently they're deep-seated enough that they're not picking up pollution from the nearby former dump, and uh, the water is extremely pure, according to the people that actually tested it. So that's a real positive thing. Uh, there is the danger that this growing gravel bar out there uh, where there used to be a large island in ages past um, is getting bigger and it has raised it so there's less tidal flooding but there's no sign yet of uh, water really becoming stagnant it's still flushing maybe not quite as much as it was but uh, in general I want to say that this um, is a <clears throat> I think a really positive uh, project for the city it's going to you know as you know raise the tax rolls it's also going to provide open space and public access. And this public access with the coming of the Blue Heron revitalization is going to be very important, especially if Metro moves ahead on uh, purchasing that trolley bridge. But even if it doesn't, it will still be important because it's going to be a pedestrian and bicycle route through the Cove development into Main Street and on to the south. And, uh, and as far as the project itself, you, you will be getting open space. Um, there, you know, we have basically a large weedy <laughs> lot now, but uh, there will be a, uh, more landscaped. And he's made agreements to landscape with native plants and preserve uh, within reason some plants and, that are already there. And That's in our code. Yeah, yeah it's your <laughs> code. And, and they you know, went beyond the code to include many more native plants than could have been done. So um, I'm basically real positive on it and uh, would like to see that, that it move forward so that they can begin construction in the coming year. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And I'm Jerry Herman and uh, watched this 
area for 21 years basically <clears throat> as it's gone through various phases. I must tell you that uh, 21 years ago or, or so, actually, no, about 19 years ago, a developer uh, was at a meeting here when you had your city commission chambers up on the hill, and he was talking about massive razzing and removing of this and that and whatever. John Williams was mayor at that time. And afterwards, I went up to the developer and I said, you know, what you're talking about doing is really severe. And he said, who are you? I said, well, I run this River Resource Museum over there, and I watch this area, and I think what you're posing to do is quite um, quite, quite a big big change. And he said, well, you know, I'm, I'm looking at that area, and I want to build a building where your River Resource Museum is. I want to build a bank there. I said, well, that would be fine if there's enough land to do that, but you'd have to build it up to about another 30 feet in height to get it above the floodplain. And I think you'd then be left with a pyramid, don't you think? He said, well, I was going to give you that peninsula that uh, separates the Clackamas from the Cove and make you my environmental manager. I said, you know, I, I appreciate the offer, but you know, I really think we need to talk about a different process here. Now, I was not the person that wrote or was opposed to this project. I want you to know that. I originally sent information to Randy and Ed as I got to know them, who seemed to be a lot more reasonable, as to what the realities were. The seven-day water exchange came about because some folks I had down there doing work were cutting up logs and so forth on the river, and we'd stack the wood, and the tide came up, and I forgot to tell them about the tide, and the wood was gone. <laughs> and seven days later, it came back. It made a big circle around the cove and came back in seven days. Now, it was not so stacked. I want you to know, it didn't restack. But these folks, well, ran, I think Brian like and I agree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's because you didn't trade the beavers enough. <laughs> I think Brian and I believe, and I think we're not the only people here, that we've been supporting this thing, this evolution for the last six out of seven years that yes. I've known these developers, and I know you have too, trying to figure out a way to make this all work. And these people, when you look at the type of work they do, it's, it's all very creative, and it's all well thought out, and it's practical environmentalism. It's doing things practically on the ground that will benefit people and wildlife. I remember your community services director going up and down the <clears throat> hills like a gazelle one day as we were trying to figure out what trees could be saved. I remember a former commissioner with us there on a day when Randy and Ed brought in a trailer and some goodies for us to have a meeting on site to figure out what we could do to save trees and this and that. And one of that former commissioners saying, what about that big pile of dirt? That's that 700,000 cubic yards, is that what it was, 70,000? Did I got thrown there? 70,000. 70,000 70, cubic yards of soil, which I suggested to Jim, I'll just say that much. Why don't you talk to them? You got the authority. He said, well, no, that would be a conflict of interest. I said, you got the authority, I'm nobody, you go talk to them about using that soil to build up the areas. And so that's, I think, where that seed was planted. So you look at the things that have happened over time and being consistent in trying to work with these people, I think the result is gonna be remarkable for your community here. And I think it sets a new precedent. We are not allowing people to mitigate for what we want. We want things done and we don't let them mitigate and make resolution through their innovative processes for what the, could be on the land. I take that to the extent of talking about logging practices and all sorts of things. If we let the private sector innovate and meet the challenge, I think they will meet the challenge. Last but not least, the water level is seven feet higher than normal. Brian talked about that. That's because the rock bar has grown so much. And I'm going to have to tell you this, Lake Oswego is losing out. Because you've got the next lake effect going on right now. Your <laughs> cove is no longer a cove. It's a beautiful lake. The vegetation come down, comes down and touches the water, where it used to be seven to eight feet above it. And I'm not so sure that the beauty that's been created by this natural rock bar is, is that much detrimental. <laughs> Something for you to sort out in your deliberations. But you've got a special piece of property started out as an industrial site. And look how it's come along uh, with these folks, uh, of course, attention. So thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. So we'll move on to general business. Uh, Thirteen six six one adaptive reuse rehab grant pros progress update. Staff. Madam Chair. Um, Help <laughs> <laughs> is she hearing the call? <laughs> so 
Uh, yes. Um, back on November 20th, uh, it was requested by the Urban Renewal Commission to receive an update on the Adaptive Rehab Reuse Program uh, and the progress we've made uh, with that program. And right down at the bottom, right up to the left, that little arrow. So, uh, and to, in order to give you an update, that's, that's not it. No. <laughs> the quick PowerPoint. Why don't I see it? developed a quick uh, PowerPoint just to give you a, a brief update on that. Um, so we started the program in fiscal year 11-12 and we received our first application in April of that year and it was awarded in June. Uh, we've had a total of four uh, projects uh, since that time. So and I've kind of broken it down into each project of what's been invested and what has come out of those projects. So the first one was uh, awarded like, like I said in 11-12 uh, it was Funnel Box Incorporated on 722 Main Street. Uh, they requested 60000 They were awarded 60000 uh, with the private investment being close to $90,000. Uh, this project, um, actually it was focused there. It was a two-level building that focused on the upper level, uh, creating a new entryway and a conference area and uh, a place where they can welcome in uh, potential clients and, and customers. Uh, it also helped them expand jobs there too. So I think they hired an additional three employees, uh, and it, it's it's kind of mixed up their operations a little bit. So they're able to expand on their operations uh, in more of a um, kind of a, a um, I guess client recruitment use. Um, the second one was the Bush uh, Bush Development on 804 Main Street. <coughs> where they turned a corner of their uh, building, which was being very underutilized, into a restaurant use. So uh, the request amount was 45000 They were awarded 45000 uh, And the private investment was approximately $140,000. Um, this, uh, I think, really got at the heart of our program, establishing mm -hmm. that mixed use. Uh, we brought in brand new jobs. Uh, we have four uh, new jobs uh, as part of that operation. Uh, so that was a, a, a win, a very good win for uh, the district. Uh, the next one was uh, awarded in 12-13, and the slideshow that you guys have, you might have different dates on, on I, had, I noticed that I had the wrong dates on the, the headings there, so I changed those. Uh, but this was awarded 12-13, T5 Equities at 818 Main Street, they requested thirty thousand. They were awarded thirty thousand uh, with a private investment of forty-six thousand. Um, so all of these, as you see, have been more than the required fifty-fifty uh, match, fifty percent match. Um, this uh, was pretty neat for me, I because I, I it helped bring in a new business along with help it helped an existing mm -hmm. loyal business in Oregon City expand. Um, and so it, it even created more of a mixed use, uh, which added to employment in the district as well. That, by the way, that is a wonderful one. It is a great mm -hmm. one. Yes, it is a great one. It uh, helped us uh, uh, continue to build upon our niche with the creative industry, creating the creative industry downtown, and expanded the, the ripe berries, the, the, the bakery down there. So that was, it was great. Uh, and the last one uh, is 5J's LLC. Uh, it's Alex Jensen on 722 Main Street. Um, this is a major private investment. Uh, we uh, have awarded 75000 which that was the amount that was requested. And they're putting in a million and a half uh, for this project. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of uh, seismic upgrading going on, re, uh, structural uh, upgrading. Um, it's going to be a great 
top-notch project once it's completed. Um, this will help this company establish their corporate headquarters in our downtown, and they're also creating a, another use in the, the entire bottom level. Uh, where the, they're looking right now at restaurant. They're building it out as where it could be restaurant, but it could also be office or uh, some sort of commercial space as well. So, with those four projects, uh, urban renewal money, urban renewal has invested two hundred ten thousand dollars total. Uh, which we've leveraged, been able to leverage 1.8 million in private investment. Wow. And the total investment of our downtown, a little over $2 million. Um, with this, we've, we've added space for, for tenants, uh, we've increased uh, the job, the employment, uh, we've created jobs, uh, and we've got a greater mix of, of uh, uses in the downtown. Um, and like I said before, it allows some businesses to expand, and we've also cr re recruited new companies as well. Could you remind me again of the uh, maximum amount you can do on an adaptive research grant? Uh, the maximum award is 150000 So we haven't, what we've gotten so far has a, you know, you yeah, no, no one has requested third of that. that. Third yeah. of that, yeah. at most. Well, half, ha there was one that was half, 75000 okay. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Wow. So. Anyone have questions? Mm. Madam, Madam Chair, I would like to compliment Eric and yeah. his yes, work on this pro yeah. program. I think we all know how different urban renewal looks to all of you and mm -hmm. to our city mm -hmm. and to our <laughs> visitors mm -hmm. yes. than it did just three years ago. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's just been an amazing turnaround and uh, great partnerships in the community that made that happen and a lot of hard work from our one man economic development department. So yeah, thanks, thank Eric. you for the summary and sure. just yeah. seeing the private investment and some of the projects are, are very high and, and I do think that having that incentive really pays off with the private investment. I'll just ask you not to be specific, but uh, are there other entities now that are approaching you for those, uh, getting on for those grants? Uh, they haven't yet, but there's a lot of talk out there. Mm -hmm. you know, people are interested. And so, uh, yeah, I... I, I uh, anticipate other projects coming our way pretty soon. So. Great, great, Eric. Uh, I've been tracking some of the uh, activities in Clark County, Washington. They've had some been on a focus of trying to create local jobs with some as incentives uh, for investment in job creation. Have you ever looked at what they're doing? And apparently, it's been uh, far exceeded. Uh, what they had expected uh, and uh, and obviously in in Oregon City and Clackamas County we need to do everything we can to create jobs and apparently they've got some ideas there that's uh, that they've been doing countywide and I don't know if you've ever looked at it I haven't looked at it uh, in detail I know they're doing some pretty good things out there but it's been the it's been amazing the degree of success they've had. So it's, it's something, worth you know, sometimes if we can even steal it, one idea that fits. Yeah. Uh, because we, we, anything we can do to get jobs and, and investment is a win win. Yeah. Anyone else? Good job. Thank you, Aaron. Thanks. Thank you. Can I ask one question? Sure. Mm -hmm. We have been working towards the DDA, and it was our expectation that hopefully it would be signed on the 18th. Is that still the expectation of the commission? We, we had some input on it, but I don't. I, I think that's the goal. That's, that's the goal. That's yeah. our goal. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, okay. The minutes of the November 6th meeting. Move to approve. Second. Oh, are we using this? Oh, are we voting? It's not. It's not. <laughs> it's not <working>. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we take call the vote. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Polly. Aye. Commissioner Mum. All right. Wait a minute. Did somebody <laughs> second? Yes. I oh did. yes. Oh okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Sorry. You're up. You're up. Aye. And Commissioner Smith. Aye. Commissioner Neely. Aye. Commissioner Egger. Yes. Commissioner Yates. Aye. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, Chair Roth. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Great. Okay. Do we have any right. um, future agenda items? 
Anyone have anything they want to discuss? No? Okay. City Manager's report. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just one item tonight I wanted to remind you that um, the Commission will probably recall when Blaine Meyer was here some months ago talking about the, his concept for the depot and the reconstruction there, or the tenant improvements rather, are going to start in January. The concept is called a bicycle bistro. Uh, I don't think he had a name for it when he was here uh, presenting it to you, but he outlined the concept in detail. So we're kind of excited about that getting underway in January to begin. So that's, that's all I have. Great. Anyone else have any? Okay. I think we're adjourned. Thank you.